We are now looking at base cost. So base cost, obviously a very important part of the CGT calculation. Very important, first thing is that you see that the base cost calculation for assets acquired before 1 October 2001 and for assets acquired after 1 October 2001 are a little bit different. You need to know this basically off by heart. For assets acquired after 1 October 2001, and this, in my opinion, is the more important one. 1 October 2001 is a lot of years ago now. But how do we calculate it? It is all of the costs allowed by paragraph 20. So whenever you see them refer to paragraph 20, they are talking about the base cost calculation. Paragraph 20 costs less any allowances that you've already claimed, so capital allowances on an asset. The reason for this is the same as when we look at, pro, uh, when we look at something like proceeds, where you deduct recoupments. Same thing with base costs. Because you already got the benefits of the capital allowances, it can't be included in the base cost again. Plus then any other costs incurred, such as cost of selling the assets. For assets acquired before the 1st of October 2001, we start with the valuation date value. Now remember, 1 October 2001 is the valuation date value. So, and then we add other costs. So let me explain to you just simple how this, what the reason for this is. And this adds in with your knowledge of CDT net. Okay, so we bought an asset in 1990, uh, building, let's say, for 2 million rands, and today we sell it for 10 million rands. Now, the total gain that we've made over this period is 8 million rands, and that is usually what our capital gain will be, 10 million minus 2 million. But what do we know now? Capital gains tax was only introduced on the 1st of October 2001, and that is called our valuation date. Now, before... 1 October 2001, everything was out of the CGT net because there was no CGT at that point in time. After 1 October 2001, we have things in the CGT net. Now, usually we'll have a disposal here, but because CGT only started here, that rule was not in place yet. So basically, all that they said is they said, we can only tax you on this period. So what we want you to do is, what is the value, valuation date value on 1 October 2001? And let's say that was 3 million rands. Then it means from 1990 to October 2001, there was a million rands gain. And from 1 October 2001 until today, there was a 7 million rands gain. So a million plus 7 gives us 8 million in total. How much can we only tax on? 7 million. So it's the valuation date. So how, why does this make a difference? So see how it works. Proceeds will be... 10 million and how will we calculate the the base cost you can't say the cost of the asset because that's 2 million can you see that it will work out to 8 million no you have to say the valuation date value of 3 million so that it works out to 7 million capital gain so that is why we start with the valuation date value over there so what can be included in the base cost of an asset? Paragraph 20 tells us what may be included. It is basically the cost of buying the asset, selling the asset, and improving the asset. The following is not included in the cost of the base cost. So in other words, when you see these things in a scenario or in this question, understand that you cannot include it in the cost of the base cost. Borrowing costs, so borrowing costs is things like interest, Raising fees, bond registration costs, or bond con cancellation costs. Raising fees is the cost of raising debt, so if you're paying someone for it. Also the cost of registering a bond or cancelling a bond when you're selling an asset. None of those costs may be included in the base cost. Okay, I'm going to make this one comment here. I've said to you here that you can't include interest. There's one exception to the rule, and that is paragraph 21G says... If you have interest that you've incurred on buying a listed share, you can include that interest in the 
base cost. And you can basically include a third of the amount. We'll see that in a second. What also here? You are, the following amounts must be deducted from base cost. They say any amount that has been allowed as a deduction from income tax. Okay, so let me explain to you. Let's say we purchase an asset with a cost of a million rands. And we claimed capital allowances on that. This is all things that you'll study separately, but just understand for now. Let's say we claim capital allowances of 600,000 rands on that. That means when we did our tax calculations over the past, obviously we did it over a period of time, but we claimed that 600,000 as a deduction right, over a number of years. When you calculate the base cost here, the base cost is the cost of the asset, less amounts which you've already got the benefit for, so less allowances of 600,000. So that will give us a base cost of 400,000. This is the same type of rule that you saw when we looked at recoupments, where we said we need to deduct recoupments, because the recoupment was already taxed. So it works in the same way. All right. So let's go and take a further look. Here's paragraph 20. So paragraph 20 says, despite section 23b and f, but subject to paragraphs 24, 25, 32, the base cost of an asset is the sum of the expenditure actually incurred in the cost of acquisition of the asset, the expenditure actually incurred in respect of valuation of the asset, the following amounts actually incurred in relation to the acquisition or disposal of the asset. So remember I said to you, it's a cost of buying, selling and improving the asset. Right, so you can see here, cost of buying, cost of buying and selling. So what can be included? The remuneration that you pay to an accountant, auctioneer, valuer, agent. So if you have an agent, so you're selling a house and you've got agent's commission, you will include that in the base cost. Transfer cost, stamp duty, advertising cost to find the seller or buyer, cost of moving that asset, the cost of installation of that asset. Right, all of those things can be included. This paragraph, uh, subparagraph uh, 7 here, I'm just going to say here, similar to paragraph 22, it works in exactly the same way. If you are the, the, remember donations tax, when you make a donation, the donor needs to pay it. It's not always the donor that pays it. If the donor doesn't pay it, the donee must pay it. So if you are the donee, someone gave you an asset and you had to pay the donations tax, you can add an amount there. And you will calculate it the same way as you do under paragraph 22. Right, then, any expenditure incurred in effecting an improvement to the asset. Not repairs, improvements. Improvements are things... It's a capital expenditure. It increases the value of the usage of the asset. So, for example, if I add a new bathroom to my house, it's an improvement. If I paint my house, it's a repair. Okay, that's not included. Now, what's important for you to see here is you'll see that there's some lines that I've included here which have been crossed out. Very recently in the Act, they, they crossed out a part of this section. It used to say that the improvement needs to still be present when you sell the asset. So for example, if I had a house and I put in a pool, that's an improvement. If I then fill the pool up with sand, I, I won't use it anymore, and then I sell the house, I couldn't include the improvement because it was no longer there. Now it's changed to say if you had an improvement, they don't say anything that it had to, has to still be there when you sell the asset. So if you had an improvement now, guys, you can add it to the base cost. So just be aware of that, especially if you're using an old version of the Saka Student Handbook. And then you'll recall, they said that you are not allowed to include interest, except if it's for a listed share in paragraph 21G. What can you include? One third of the interest. So if you incur interest of 30,000 rands, and the cost was, let's say 300,000 rands, this is now shares that you've purchased, listed shares. If this were listed shares, this is what the base cost would be. The base cost would be the cost, 300,000, interest, one third of that. So 30,000 times 1 over 3, 10,000. So my base cost would be 310,000. 
This is if it was a listed share. If it was an unlisted share, and the same information applies, you just can't claim that interest. Right, so it becomes 300,000. And this is the same for unlisted shares, any other asset. It's just a listed share where you can claim add the interest. So what may not be added to the base cost? This is what I just spoke of. The following amounts, the expenditure incurred by a person respective of an asset does not include the following. Borrowing costs, raising fees, bond registration costs, expenditure on repairs. See, there's the cost. Repairs, so uh, uh, improvements you can claim, not on repairs. Valuation date value for Section 8A. This is not um, something that you should really worry about. And they say, other than borrowing costs in subparagraph 1G. So they say, borrowing costs in subparagraph 1G may be included. Borrowing costs in subparagraph 1G says it's a third of the interest. Right, guys, so that's it. The cost of buying the asset, selling the asset, and improving it. So let me just make sure that you see again. Sale of asset. Let's say you sell an asset for a million rands. You paid agent commission. So an agent had to sell it for you, and you had to pay that agent commission of 50,000. And the cost of the asset was let's say 600,000 okay I want you to see here your proceeds so in your bank account you will receive 950,000 rands because that's what they will pay you so you you will receive a million rands but the agent will deduct the commission what do you include for proceeds the full million rands base cost is then the cost of the asset 600,000 plus the commission of 50,000. So it makes my base cost 650. Now I know what you say to me, if you made it 950 a year and your base cost was then just only 600,000, both situations you would have 350,000 rands as a capital gain. I'm not disagreeing with you mathematically wise, but this is not allowed. You have to do it in this way. That's what paragraph 20 tells you and Paragraph 35, which speaks about proceeds, does not tell you you can deduct costs from it. It tells you you can only deduct things like recoupment. Okay, so guys, just be aware of that. Now guys, the valuation date value that we spoke of for assets before 1 October 2001, this is discussed in paragraphs 25, 26, 27. This is a bit more complicated to explain in detail, just over here. Um, without looking at an example. This example you're seeing over here is that same as that timeline principle that I discussed at the beginning of this. Right, so that's what you're seeing over there. You can work through that yourself and then you'll see basically the valuation date value can be one of the following items. It's either the market value on the 1st of October, an amount called the time apportionment base cost, which is a complicated calculation, but both of these will be given to you in the exam. Or it can be what is called the 20% rule, which is 20% times the proceeds less all of the costs after 1 October that we incur. You'll have to calculate that. Or it is just proceeds less the cost after 1 October. How do you know which one to use? Well, guys, paragraph 26 and 27 gives us instructions. It's a bit complicated, so I've recorded a separate lecture example for you to work through this, and there is a separate lecture example for you on this. Please do work through that if you are interested. You will also see, I will talk about how important it is to understand this. In my opinion, this is a long time ago, 1 October 2001, so this is not as common anymore. I'm not saying it cannot be asked, but it's not as common anymore. Right, that is base costs.